Do I have? And we'll get some lineups read by Brandon Schaefer. This will be an artist corner. Let's be tonight's starting lineups. First for Rochester, number three, Abigail Richard. Number five, Dallas Holloway. Number six, Tessa Brooks. Number eight, Ryla Heishman. Number nine, Mackenzie Leslie. Number 11, Macy Nelson. Number 17, Kendall Bradley. Number 20, Amy Williams. Number 22, Ellie Shank. Number 24, Mercedes Brown. And in the goal, number zero, Callie Woods. Keely Woods. Mm. Now the starting line for your Argus Lady Dragons, number five, Lily Hines, number six, Lauren McLaughlin, number seven, Ariana Allen, number eight, Bella Stoltz, number nine, Sydney Shepard, number 10, Samantha Rudiger, number 12, Haley Markley, number 13, Emma Dunlap, number 19, Lizzie Edmonds, number 20, Madeline Vanderweel, and in the goal for Lady Dragons, number 70, Alyssa Poisel. Thank you so much, Brandon. <laughs> Ooh, shot on goal there. Great save by Kaylee. Shot was on goal by Shepard. Shot by Sydney Shepard. We're going to get a little uh, discussion going here with Brandon Shaver. He's doing double duty today. He's keeping the scoreboard. Announcing. I do it all here. Yeah, he actually used to coach the junior high when my daughter was in junior high. So he's got a long history in soccer. That's been a little while now. <laughs> Just a couple years. Ought to be a good game. Yeah, Rochester has definitely improved. Yeah, over zebras, the years. zebras coming in with a three and zero on the season. And the dragons, you know, let's see. I did not hear everyone you said. One dragon starting four upperclassmen. Five to just. Four upperclassmen, Lizzie Edmonds, Mad Maddie Vanderwill, Alyssa Poisel, and Sydney Shepard. The rest are freshmen and sophomores.
What do you think the Dragons need to do to win tonight? Well, they definitely need to possess the ball, move the ball on the ground. Um, I think they have a good chance of getting goal opportunities if they can keep the ball on the ground, get the ball wide, move Play Rochester's feed. defense around right. There was one game, uh, I think it was at Eastbrook maybe, and I just kept saying to myself, play defeat, play defeat, play defeat. It seemed like we kept giving the ball away. Yeah, it's possession is, is a big part of it, that's for sure. Yes, if you don't possess the ball, you can't put it in the back of the net. That's right. Always try to teach the girls that if they don't have the ball, they cannot score. Yes. Most most sports are kind of like that. Basketball, you got to have it there. Great strip of the ball there. And we have the world's mightiest ball girl over there. Yes. <laughs> Brandon's She's daughter. She's going to get a workout. She will sleep well tonight. You know, in our defensive line right at the moment... Is Lizzie Edmonds back on defense? Yeah, she's playing right here on right. Okay, D. so one junior, two freshmen, and a sophomore. Okay. Again, right there where the referee's standing right now, there's all that space, and we just if we can get the ball on the ground into that space. So we need to use the field a little bit better. Got to use the field, got to keep the okay. ball, move the ball side to side. Some it, Maybe they can watch this game film later and say, oh, look at all that space I had. <laughs> Lots of empty space. I think Rochester's game usually is a, is the long ball, like this one right here. They do have some speed up front. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Lizzie Edmonds is over six foot tall. We, we're not quite sure how tall she is. <laughs> um, she's got nice long legs, big, <laughs> big feet or whatever, you know, and I – she's – Pretty good at stopping that. Well, she's only going to take two steps to the other girls through yeah, the course. Yeah. So she covers a lot of ground. Oh, nice little tap over there by Vanderbilt. Smart. We'll give and go. Just looking at Rochester. They've got quite a few juniors and seniors that they started. Like you said earlier, Chantal, a coach, is a product of Vargas, and she yeah. loves, absolutely loves the game of soccer. And, and she's been working with these girls. She has, and, and she she's puts all very her heart. passionate about yeah, it. Yeah, puts all her heart into it. You know, she went through some, some rough years at the beginning, and they've just they've gotten better every year, and it's, uh -huh. that's impressive to see. <laughs> We've got Val Tsitsiris with us here. He said when Rochester won the first game of the season, Chantal said she cried, literally. So she I loves the sport, loves the girls. If they That's pull off the see. win today, I don't know how she's going to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> we may have to carry we, her back to I'm back sure, home, yeah. I'm sure I will hear about it, and everybody else around yeah. here will hear about it as well, which is all right. Now, is she, what, she graduated in 04? She, she was, um, Yes. Okay, so a couple years right. younger than, three years younger than you. Many years younger than me. We didn't have soccer when I was in school, so they got it the fall I that I graduated. So Got a shot opportunity here. Didn't strike it very well. Just yeah. off frame. Good idea, though. Yeah, Cindy Shepard, uh, I agree with you. If, if you're going to do that, you may as well put some more, I like to call it mustard on it. Yes. Got <laughs> Pepper, mustard, whatever you're. Phil says stank on it. I, That's whatever. probably a softball term, I would assume. Oh, yeah. Grab by Poison. Got Hannah Trupp getting ready to sub in for the Lady Dragons. Next opportunity. So, Coach Joe subbing early tonight. We talked the other day. <laughs> Soccer is kind of a hard game. You know, basketball, you can pull someone out like that. And soccer, sometimes it's hard to get that person out of the game to be able to in give them instruction. And that she threw it in so quickly we didn't even get a sub in. And the ARs are, okay. They're definitely trying to move the ball quickly, so quickly that we can't get subs in. 
That's right. Sometimes you don't want that sub. You would rather play the quick throw. Oh, even yeah. Even though you want to get her into the well, game. Well, especially where they are. Now, I Hannah, mean, Hannah might have a different opinion of that, but Well, and she you wants to do watched the game. the game the other night. They played, oh, and freshman Lily Ouch. Hines with the left-footed shot. Again, that's what they need to look for right there, that outside ball back to the inside. That was well defended. Yeah, nice and strong on the ball. Again, looking for this longer ball outside. It's good defense. Kaylee may be just a freshman. Kaylee Markley, number 12, but she's <laughs> she's got twin brothers. So, you know, yes. she's played with, grew up playing with the boys, and she's a little toughy. Another good nice. We're going to have a corner kick for Argus. It'll be an Argus part. Lizzie Edmonds here on the corner. Oh, what a great ball. Yeah. We'll all defend it again. Oh. Rochester is doing a good job of packing the box. Oh, what great a shot save. save. What a shot and save. I believe that was. That was Lily Hines Lily that Hines. shot it, yeah. Freshman Lily Hines. I don't mind them shooting outside the 18. Sometimes it's hard to get girls to shoot inside <laughs> or outside the 18. They want to dribble it into the six. And, yeah, never know when it might take a funky bounce. And yeah, Kaylee Woods is – Val's given us some info. It's Kaylee Wood's third year as starting as a um, varsity keeper. I know she's played travel down here with some of these girls. Um, I know she's done some goal training with former Dragon um, Adam Calhoun. And she takes it seriously. You know, it's her passion to be a goalie. I mean, that was that was a save. That one yeah, that was on a that great. Shot, on that Lily Hines shot. I mean. Lily can put some pace on the ball. That was, that I'm ball sure. Was moving. Well, it looks like Madison Barkas will be coming into the game the next dragon throw in. You get a second, Amy. Can you text me that roster from Rochester that I we sure don't can. have to share here? With technology these days and yeah, COVID, of course, we don't have paper rosters like we normally do. Okay. And it should be hopefully on its way to you, unless you've changed your number. <laughs> Not since 2001. Okay. It might have been a little later than that, but. So far, just the two shots on goal for Lady Dragons. And uh, two good saves. Keep this at 0-0. Zero, zero. This could uh, be an opportunity One thing here. Lily does well is settle the ball, and she got that right to the foot of Emma Dunlap, who's going to put it in the back of the goal. We'll see. First Federal Savings Bank has offered mortgage loans for over 50 years. Now we're also offering commercial. Heinz to Dunlap, then? Dun yes, Heinz to Dunlap. Argus goal by number 13, Emma Dunlap, with assist from number 5, Lily Heinz. And she just gets it up there enough, and Emma is just quick enough that she is able to get past the defense. And I believe left foot, left foot that into the... Here. Put Argus up 1-0. we got a Rochester sub as well. You got the noculars. <laughs> Oh, Lily Eaton, yeah. Lily's actually played with these girls, too. I've, I've recognized that name as well. We have a, a lawn. I tell you what, I'm trying to do everything here tonight. You're doing a wonderful <laughs> job. Um, there's quite a few girls on this Argus team. 
along with some of the girls on the Rochester team that have been playing travel together for a while. So it's kind of fun to always see them play against each other. You know, they're friends when they're right. on the same team and, well, and friends when they're playing against yeah. each other. But they're competitive. I mean, they're yeah. going to gonna make it a game. on the field, that's right. No. <laughs> leave it on the field, and then you well, leave it on the field. And then you text each other after the game and tell them mm -hmm. good game. And I played travel at Warsaw. Um, so I got to see kids from Warsaw and uh, Wawasee, Bethany. They were all uh, on our travel team together. Okay. And, uh, yeah, during the regular season, it was fun to beat up on them a little bit. And then after the game, we shook hands, gave each other a hug. And, and went and got a burger or something, yep. yeah. They actually of course, that was before the cell phone days, so I I'm not even that old. I think they changed. Um, you can have seven from each school now. Which I don't have necessarily a problem with as long as you're spreading out those numbers. But uh, Yeah. Is that Bella Stoltz coming? I believe so. Number eight. Um, Be free kick for Argus. Yeah, I mean, Kaylee Woods, uh, Dallas Holloway, Tessa Brooks, Ryle Heishman, McKendall Bradley, Lily Eaton. Just looking at this list, Haley um, Pesek. Amy Williams, Ellie Shank, Mercedes Brown, those are all, Krista Dillingham, I think all of those girls have played down here with them at one point or another, so kind of fun to see them get together. And Which again, we're kind of partial to it, but there's just a lot of good soccer in this area. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when they all get together and play together, they all get better. I still remember when Samantha played, we'd played Walkerton um, in travel, and they were good. They were very athletic girls. Um, and then when they got to high school, they had to merge. You right. know, they couldn't have their – and I remember my daughter saying, we have to play with them. <laughs> 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 and she was really afraid of a couple of the – not afraid of them, but just didn't want to play with them. And, you know, she came home from the first practice. She's like, I had a great time, and so-and-so was great. And yeah. And they're good friends to this day. So. Is it Josh Obermeyer? Yeah, the game. He is the assistant principal at uh, LaVille High School now. Our center referee, Josh Overmeyer, has actually done some high-level games, including college games, and mm -hmm. one even at Notre Dame. He did oh, really? a Notre Dame game. A uh, guy had backed out, and a buddy of his called and said, do you want to come do it? And he did it. And uh, I asked him how it went. He said, it was all right. <laughs> so Different. It's I, The game is obviously much faster. but Well, and I always wonder how he feels coming back here to ref – these kind of games. I mean, I'm sure it's a little difficult for him with... Uh, Especially girl. I don't mean yeah. that in a bad way. No, Please yes. don't take that in a bad way, but to same go from college boys... Was it college we boys? I guess before. I didn't yeah, ask. It okay. was boys. To come back and, and ref high school girls is just a different level of play. It's the same thing we were talking about before. It, the men's game at the college level especially is much oh, cleaner. Yeah. You know, a foul is a foul in, yeah. in the men's game. You know a foul when you see it. Oh, yeah. because oh, It's not nice quite Nice strip chippy. there by Kaylee um, Markley. Kaylee, whose brothers are both on the varsity boys team, her brother Colton was the is the has played goalie. Uh, actually, this year he's out on the field. So state champion. Yeah, goalie. yes, three time conference, all conference goalie, I believe. Looks like Lily, Lily Hines coming back into the game when she gets the opportunity. All right, I like <laughs> to see that. You know, you try to teach the girls and, and all players that. You know, pick up that ball. Sometimes the referees just don't know who the throw goes to. Yeah. And they're waiting for you to help them out, and you pick that up and say, "All right, go ahead." Sometimes you but know better because you've seen it. The referee blows whistle, says, "Now it's the other way." You just drop it and, and go. I have a dragon sub. Looks like Emma Dunlap will get a rest. And yes, Our Lily Hines. Argus stays at number 13 in uh, this week's Class 1A poll. Eastbrook stays at number 5. And I only mentioned that because Argus beat Eastbrook on Saturday. Eastbrook stays at number 5. and Even after the loss. Even after the loss yeah. to the Dragons, yeah. You know, with those polls, sometimes a lot of those coaches are just looking at scores and trying yeah. to – they're not actually watching games. And, yeah. um, the Argus boys, they saw stayed at number 1 in 1A. Um, they did. At Which the they beat three A Northwood. They did, but they did lose big to to Plymouth. But yeah, again, you kind of look at school sizes and, and things like that. 
think we'll give a shot on there. Interesting is that the Northwood boys moved up from number 11 to number 9. So Northwood boys moved up from number 11 to number 9, and they lost 4-1. to one. Ah, they they did have a win. And I'm sure I had to sit in the ticket booth. I missed that game, but I'm sure that was a really good game. <laughs> and Ariana no, Allen looks like she's battling there. Bella Stoltz. Good shot. be a corner. And you know what? Bella's left-footed. Uh, yeah. That is one thing that is not odd, but I've seen more left-footed players. Yes, there are a lot of left-footed players right now. We're Samantha Redinger, Bella Stoltz. Micah Heckman. Maddie Vander will be taking the corner kick. She gives a big boot it's right to the top of the net. Top there. Couple subs for Rochester. In the game for Rochester, number two, Cameron Burkett. And number three, Abigail Richard. So Cameron Burkett and Abigail Richard coming into the game. Burkett had a hat trick against Eastern. Oh, Burkett had a hat trick against Eastern on Saturday. It's nice having our own uh, statistician. I know. <laughs> we just have our own statistician behind it. us. And check out Val's blog on www.rtc4.com. At the top it says Val's blog. Click on it. Check it out. You know, when you look back there at him, he's just got a notepad. He's not looking on a computer. He's not. He's not he even just, looking. He's, he's writing notes about sports. this game. His stats are all in his head. <laughs> he's, he's that into our local sports. And Looks like, it's like a free kick here for the Maddie Vanderbilt Vanderbilt take this kick. Right in there. Oh, what a touch and save. Ooh. Maddie to Maddie there. Maddie, Madeline to Madison. Shot was on goal by number 21, Madison Marcus, saved by Woods. That's another one. That, this game should be 2 nothing. I mean, that was a heck of a save there. Yeah, good job. Looks like Emma Dunlap and Lizzie Edmonds are waiting to come back into the game for the Dragons. Sometimes we don't give our defense enough credit. They're not the goal scorers. No. Uh, Lauren McLaughlin was a – I don't know if she started the whole season last year, but she was a, a, an integral part of their defense last year. Um, she's quick and she has a big foot. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, we the girls graduated Three. a strong part of their defense. They so. did. Uh, Peyton Betts and Lauren Hampton and the other one will come to me. One uh, more. Don't yeah. I apologize for forgetting, but you haven't Sorry about forgotten. that if you're watching at home. Hey, if you are watching at home and you'd like um, a shout out, let me know. I can remember Peyton would chase down just about. She could chase down. She was just fun about to anybody watch. That was that was through there. Yeah. We coached her a little bit in uh, junior high, and she was she was fun to watch. Back in the game for August number thirteen, Emma Dunlap, and number nineteen, Lizzie Edmonds. A little less than uh, 20 minutes left here, about halfway through this half. Dragons lead 1-0. It's a great ball. We just got to have somebody, somebody home Lily's to Lily's chasing it down. And we'll have a dragon throw in. Big throw in there. Out to the foot of Sydney Shepard. Shepard's going to have it. I think she's trying to chip it. Yeah, I'm not so sure that's a shot, but she kind of needs to decide one or the other there. Yeah. She could, she could hit that she shot. She either needs to pull off a little bit yep. and let someone poke it in or, or like you said, give pour, it some more. a little mustard, right? Yeah. But I like her placement. Both times she's been square on the goal, so she needs to have confidence that she can either put it in or step. There you go. Asked Val for a pronunciation, and, and he said, "I think." And he had Rochester number sixteen, Haley Pisak. Pisak, Pisak. 
Yeah, I'll get it right. Haley Pisek. Pisek. We're if we <laughs> we apologize. We <laughs> take no credit if we if we butcher any names. We don't mean to. You know what? Rochester has one of the easiest rosters here so far tonight. Yes. With names. So that's all right. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll blame Samantha on the camera. <laughs> And Emma Dunlap turning the ball, trying to get a shot off. Yeah. Defense doing a great job. Yeah, they are really swarming that middle. Again, yeah. If we could just maybe one more pass back out and try it one more time, we could open that up. But again, we're just – Rochester here is looking for this long ball here. <laughs> Kaylee Markley kind of just stands there and – Kind of waits for you to make your move. Yeah. That's one of those, as a coach, you'd say left foot stays in bounds. So if she plays that with her left foot, that ball will stay, stay in bounds. bounds rather than the right mm -hmm. foot, which will curve out on our slightly sloped field here at Eugene Snyder Field. Drains well. It does drain well. Which we got to see the other day when it rained and poured. And yes, but it did not rain up here in the booth. Or the ticket booth. Good ball. Emma Dunlap putting some speed on, trying to get around. I can't see the number. Good defense. Well defended. Ooh, oh, push off with the arm. That's, that's a foul as the crowd goes wild. Bella Stoltz just needs to keep that arm down and use she'll that, avoid use that. that body, just mm -hmm. keep the chicken she was doing there. a good job. Is that Maddie coming back in the game? I believe it might be. <laughs> I'm trying to look out and see who's out there, and that was the only one I could come up with. Yep. Good. And I can't see that far. Got uh, Ariana Allen getting ready to come in as Ariana well. Ariana Allen. So we are across the field from <laughs> from the subs coming in. We're trying to see, and Brandon's got some binoculars that he gets to try and cheat with. Good ball across for Rochester, just nobody home. And just safely played out of bounds. Again, just playing that with the right foot this time down the line would maybe get that ball down in, the field in, just a little further. In this further. instance, she's the lefter, lefty, yep. so. Yep. So, again, she's just playing her strong foot, but mm -hmm. got the ball out of danger. This will be a shot. Oh, we will head it out. She did come up with the lone goal, and Lauren McLaughlin clearing it there. trouble here for Lady Dragons. Shot on and she saved. came up with the lone goal for CGA, though. Bella Stoltz did. Fifteen to go here in the first half. Phil and I are discussing. Hope we're we're seeing if we can give Samantha any pointers at halftime. So it's it's very hard in the dark to find the ball at times. So of course, your daughter Samantha is now. Coaching at the high school level, right? So she is actually JV, uh, coaching JV girls at Plymouth. Right which again, that's that's Argus spreading the love a little bit here. Yeah. Which is all right. She was excited. Um, her and Lindsay Stiles, another uh, Plymouth grad, um, who graduated the same year she did from Plymouth. Um, or actually, I'm sorry, she went to C CGA. She's from Plymouth, but she transferred to the academy. Oh, nice hustle there. Um are coaching together. So they've had it good. It's been good for her to be a role model. Yes. And yes. it helped her mature. Not that she wasn't mature, but helped her gain some introspective of how it is to be the adult. <laughs> well, I don't think it's any secret. She was one of my favorites to coach when she was younger and just always had a, a solid head on her and 
she under she understood the game exactly she did and um, she had a passion for the game as well which is you can't coach that you can't coach the passion what's funny is that i think she lost it a little bit after she graduated she was a little burned out from you know which is understandable yeah. and oh see so that's that extra ball outside now maybe we can open that middle up oh not very nicely oh. done look at that it's like i called it like i called it a goal for the lady ariana Dragons. allen over to lizzie edmonds i do believe is that what you saw Oh, you're all right. We're to <laughs> I talked to Brandon when he was getting ready to announce, and I got his left hand confused from his. <laughs> you're doing got, a great job. Got the stats going, got the announcing going. I know you're. D I'm just sitting here, just talking. That's all right. <laughs> Can I write something or? <laughs> Oh, anyway, Samantha, I think she's regained a little bit of that passion. She, I think she kind of misses playing a little bit. So it's good she can give the opportunity of, of teaching the game now. Yeah, I mean, that's why I like to coach. I just like to be around the game. That's why I'm up here in the booth right now. It's it's so funny that, you know what, I love to coach. I love to be an assistant coach. I love to coach the little ones. <laughs> They're so much fun. I love to see them learn from the beginning of the season to the end. And they have far less attitude than the older they ones. They do. They do. Which and they're so thrilled when they just do something little, you know. Yes, as they get older, they think they know everything, and, and or it's they harder to get them to, to teach them. Yes. It's like having kids. Okay, big shout out to Ray Davis uh, watching at home. Ray was my basketball coach my senior year, my favorite year of basketball. Now is, I think he's the assistant varsity, Ray Davis assistant varsity girls. Yeah. Ooh. Ouch, ouch. Yeah, I've got Val T here giving me the. She got hit in the face there, but then committed a foul, but it's well done. At Grace College, I knew that. So he's a head coach at Argus, head coach at Whitco, and an assistant coach at Grace College. He was my favorite basketball coach, yeah. <laughs> so shout out to him watching at home. He did radio broadcasting of basketball for years, too. So did he? <laughs> well, I should have got him to come and help me announce the game tonight. Yeah, we could just do guest announcers until we teach some kids how to. He freaked me out there a minute, though. He said just talking, and I was afraid maybe he couldn't see the picture. I hate to see that jump, the chest ball yes. where the arms go out. Yep. That's something. Oh, gosh. A little hug there. Telling her she loves her. Ooh, yep, sticky just, ball. Yep, just stepped on the ball there. Nothing there. Mm, she's embarrassed. I can see. coming in for each team here. Oh, my goodness. Kendall Bradley, number 17 on Rochester, also runs cross country. So, wow, that's a challenge to play a varsity sport and, well, two varsity sports run cross country and try and. Ooh. No, it's cross country and soccer. You're doing a lot of running. Oh, Rochester girls cross country team won the Tippecanoe Valley um, Invitational last Saturday. Congratulations to them. Kendall ran a 22:59 in her first ever varsity race, 5K race. Yeah, that's am that's amazing. I can't walk a mile in that time. <laughs> oh my gosh! Congratulations to her. Wow, that's impressive. Never was one that liked to run. I like to play sports, yeah, but I've just <laughs> unless something's chasing me or I've never understood the running for <laughs> for fun thing. But you know, yeah, some hey. of them do it to stay in shape. Some of them do it um, because they're competitive. They like to compete, and, and they like to win. Looks like Samantha running there for Argus, maybe? believe so. And 20 and 8.
Samantha right here. <laughs> Coach Davis wants to know if I didn't like our running drills in basketball. No, no, see, I liked those. I could do that in the gym. I just don't <laughs> like running distance. I wish I could be in that good of shape now, but maybe we need to start a old lady boot camp or something. I don't know. Yeah, when I when I played soccer, I was a forward, and oh. that's because uh, I didn't like to run for long periods of time. So, um, I was a defender. And now, mind you, I said we didn't have varsity soccer. We only had rec soccer back then, and we used to play the academy every spring. Um, we were kind of mean. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, one of my fellow uh, defenders broke one of the girls' ankles. <laughs> Not purposely, just it was kind of different ball back then. It wasn't as fin that, you know, wasn't, wasn't as much finesse as you right. have today. I think that probably comes from the the girls' game is just more talented now. They oh yeah, we have the development I, in place now that we didn't have then. I wish we had yeah. Would have had what, you know, like my daughter had the opportunity of yeah. experiencing. It's unfortunate that it took so long. Yeah, but shoulda, coulda, woulda. I get to see kids enjoying it now, so. Big throw in. And the Zebras will keep advancing down the field. That's that ball right down the line, and you just let the other team play that out. You sure. You it up 20 yards and do it again. Why not? Great ball into the box here. Cleared out well by the defense football? once again. Have they played football at Rochester? This Friday night's the bell game. Oh, so Rochester has their football bell game this Friday night that, that at Valley. Valley right? Okay. Yeah. It's Valley. I've been, to, I've been to that game. So Rochester's received 600 tickets, but you must buy, buy them in advance. Yeah, by, noon by noon on Friday. Okay. The, uh, At the attendance office. Thank you, Val, for filling us with good information here. Tickets no tickets will be sold at the okay. gate. Okay. Got to have those pre-bought tickets. Sydney Shepard here on the corner. Till by the blue cleats, I'm starting yes. to think of that, so I pick her out a little easier. I do like when someone has, and, and Ariana Allen has some yellow ones. <laughs> I've got Brandon Schaefer again helping me on the microphone. Um, Brandon is a 2000. One. One graduate of Argus High School. Um, he and his brother are integral parts of the, the system here. They've been helping do different jobs and coaching and different things. Zach coached JV girls for quite, quite a long time. Um, you coached junior high. You and your father coached junior high girls for seven, eight. Seven, eight years. Yeah, ago. something like that. Um, so he's got three kids now in high school. One in high school, one in junior high, one in kindergarten. <laughs> and... Uh, he agreed to help us out here and get his perspective on the game tonight. He's yeah. also doing double duty by s doing scoreboard stats and announcing. <laughs> so yeah. thank you, Brandon. Did it all for covered tonight. Yeah. I still feel kind of lazy over here, like I could be helping do something. This will be an Argus quarter. So I know this was a thing for the boys the other night, having so many corner kicks and not getting goals off of it. This yeah. is Argus's fourth. Um, it'd be great to see him get something on it towards the goal at least. Well, and <laughs> I'm still reminded of the game the girls played. I don't remember which year it was of Samantha's, and Warsaw just kept scoring off a corner kick. Yes, so I, I remember that game. I'm sure you do. <laughs> it was here. Again, that's a great ball in. We just don't have anybody attacking yeah. that ball. Now, is Liz Lizzie Edmonds in the game? She took the corner. Yeah, she took the she corner. Took the corner. Okay. Oh, a little left-footed shot there. I like Sydney Shepard running up on it. Um, Lizzie Edmonds is the one that if I was kicking a corner, I'd be aiming kind of for her. 
you know, over six foot tall on a girls team is we'll yeah, tap Ar up there, Argus is just kind of playing back a little bit here, trying to prevent that that long ball here. Yeah, got and a two oh lead. Rochester gets one through here, they have a great opportunity to score. You know, I think they definitely don't want to see a goal going into halftime. Um they don't want to build up any momentum for the Rochester team going into the half. Looks like Madison Barkus might be yes. waiting to come into the game. Knee brace. Knee brace? <laughs> yep, she has a knee All brace. Right. So if you look at <laughs> These are the little tells of how to tell who's across the field. And she'll give Lizzie Edmonds a break. Maybe one of these games we can get Andy Stone to come back and Andy's doing we just don't AD duties. We just don't do the goal calls like Mr. Tone, no. Mr. Stone does. We just or if the keeper is napping, we they, just. If you, they can't hear you out <laughs> on the field, you're not doing it loud enough. I think if you, you haven't blown the microphone out. Oh, Bella Stoltz, left-footed shot there. Good idea. Two minutes remaining in the half. Just a bit wide there by Hines. I like the fact, though, that she didn't boot it over. Yeah, I mean, it's still a good look. Just yeah, this field kind of chopped up right now. It's a beautiful field, but it's a little chopped up from Saturday's Invitational. Four games in the rain. It's yeah. going to take a little time for it to, to and, resettle and back down. I don't know how much rain we got in town. We barely got any at my house. I live outside of it town. It sure seemed like we got an inch of rain here. But I, I would say it was Maybe a half. I looked. don't even think we got a tenth of an inch. I mean, it really didn't even rain. Outside the goal shot That's there. Nice shot. diving save by Woods. I think that was. I think that might have been on goal there. It was Emma Dunlap, wasn't it? Yeah, I think we'll Kay. give her a shot on. It was from our angle. It's hard to tell, but we'll give Woods another save because she deserves one anyway. One minute left here in the half. Again, Lady Dragons hoping not to give up a goal here in the last minute. And Rochester looking to maybe tighten this up. It would be a big momentum boost if they can poke one in here. And conversely, obviously, Rochester doesn't want to give one up and go no. down three. With, uh, and give the Dragons here. any momentum now, huh? I think Rochester would be satisfied with 2-0 in this yeah. in the scheme right now, the way it's been going. Good defense there by the Lady Zebras. Oh, great save. Okay, so the Lady Dragons will go into the halftime, leading the Lady Zebras 2-0. Um, we will be back after some commercial breaks and bring you the second half action. We've got about a 10-minute break, and we'll have some commercials and uh, try and see if we can get some more introspective on it. They've definitely, uh, their defense has, you know, packed that box and done a great job of keeping the Dragons from being able to shoot and senior, senior goal? Um, well, I got to bring it back up on my phone here. Oh, you got music playing. Let me go. Yeah. I, I'll pull that up. Um, Get a little Eye of the Tiger going here to get fired up. So you're playing music too. Jeez. Junior goalkeeper. My bad. Junior goalkeeper yeah. has had and some Val great. Said, uh, third year. So third year starting junior starting goalkeeper. Starting since her freshman year then. Yeah, is she has uh, had some great saves. So really kept it closer than what I'm sure the Dragons would like. But I'm sure. Yeah, I had the Dragons with six shots on goal. Um, one of those, uh, two of those going in. Sorry, seven shots on goal, two of those going in. So, And some of those saves were, were very good saves. So, yes, Plymouth girls ranked number 17 in Class 2A. 
Yeah. Yeah. So the Plymouth boys had 71 kids go out for so the soccer Plymouth, Plymouth boys handling <laughs> Plymouth boys handling uh, Argus didn't really help them out much. I'm surprised by that. Right. And didn't really move in the polls. Wow. So I don't again, understand the polls. Could be a is, very that the, is that the coach's poll? Yeah. Oh. Good, good play there. Shot just wide by Vanderweel. Again, that ball outside, back to the middle, and then laid back for the shot, kind of moving that defense around a little bit. I think that's what they're going to have to do to be able to get the shot off. The defense just keeps it too tight in there to – they're not going to make it easy on them, that's for sure. That's right. I mean, that's and that's what you want to see. Kind of the goal. <laughs> yeah. Good little passing sequence by the Dragons. But broken up by the Zebras. like to see Rochester maybe get the ball on the ground here and, and try to work a little passing as well. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, Play it from the backfield. They're kind of just uh, gaining possession and then almost giving it back to the Lady Dragons. Right. I'm sure Chantal would like to see them, you know, possess that ball on the ground just a little bit, work the ball down the field mm -hmm. uh, on the ground. A little left-footed poke there by Emma Dunlap. You know, it is a different season for the girls. And not playing all spring, not – having their normal and you know some of these girls play basketball also they normally do some basketball in june and have some soccer open fields and i'm sure rochester does the same thing well and i think rochester obviously had a, a little quarantine period as well for their so they team. had a couple so more week hiatus right. of not yeah so but you know what it's uh, it's crazy to see them out here playing i didn't think it was going to happen no i didn't either. um really really didn't think so or n and if it did we thought how long and now it feels like it's there's not really much Stopping it at this point. Hopefully, no. I'm not jinxing it. But yeah, please don't. Yes, we, you know, we ask when you come here that you have your mask on. Um, I think most people, when they get within their little pod group of people they are related to, they kind of pull them down. But most people are respectful in the mm -hmm. the, the crowded areas. The we want the kids to be able to keep. Stands. Yeah, we want the kids to be able to keep playing. And that's what we've been trying to push to the parents. It's look, I mean. You might not care that you get sick, but if you get sick and go home and then get your daughter sick who then gets a teammate sick and then your entire team now is is losing two and weeks of that, a season. And, and there's that senior that doesn't get to play there. Right. So, again, it's about, you know, personal accountability and, and looking out for, for others, and we're not always very good at that. Mm -mm. The beginning of the season, though, there was a lot of people, oh, they're so out of shape. Well, of course they're out of shape. <laughs> I don't know about you. I have two teenagers at home, and I don't see them going out running every morning. It's that rare breed that will go out and, uh, well, obviously Kendall Bradley because she likes to run yeah, those, <laughs> cross country. Those but the ones that like to run. I'm sure she she was probably out running. Um, good for her. I feel I've never been to a cross country match. Is this something you can go and like so watch? Had a dangerous play here, Colin Rochester. Oh. Referee um, tried to let the advantage play out, and it didn't. And he so put it back to the beginning where it started. This will be an indirect kick here for the Lady Dragons. Hopefully we Got Maddie can recognize that. So this is going to have to be a Oh, you a said chip. indirect. Yeah, this is an indirect. On in That's a set play there. Not a great one. I think probably want that one back for the Lady Dragons. You know? Wasn't yep. bad if Maddie would have put a little less yeah. mustard on that one. That would. I think that that close to the goal, you almost just a little chip and I'm and I'm for a deflection. I'm kind of reminded of going to Concord, Samantha's seventh or eighth grade year, and Samantha had a free. It was a handball she at did. the forty-two yep. yard. It was you're a gonna you're gonna remind me of that one. Forty-two yard because it was the forty. She kicked a yes. forty-two yard free kick, and it went in. It was indirect. It had to touch someone. It touched the goalie's hand. The and ref it should not have been indirect from the beginning. Because it was a direct kick because it was a handball. tried to firmly and politely explain to the referee who did not 
care well, to listen. And to even us. if it wasn't indirect, it touched the goalie's hand, which indirect just means it has to touch someone. Am I not correct? That's correct. Yeah. Just any. And she any called person. it off. You were nice enough to give her the goal, though. She appreciated that. Yes, it was. Uh, it was a shot. I mean, it was a great shot. Not a lot of fourteen-year-olds that can make a forty-two-yard. Uh, she did that at Franklin. She had a forty-yard one at Franklin, and they were all kind of like, "Oh, that went in." Oh, Bella. Good shot on goal there by Stoltz. Bella Stoltz willing. That's what third maybe for her? Is that her third? Do you keep track of how uh, many? I have her down uh, at least second? for two. I, might, two? That okay. I may have missed one. She And she may have put one kind of close and not. And Lady Dragons here dropping back. Get a little more confidence in her sophomore year. Rochester could control that maybe for one or two more touches and, and get a little more forward. And I have to say I went to, uh, is it Eastbrook? Is that the one down in Kokomo? I think. And the passing of the Lady Dragons passing that day was probably not. I mean, we were playing on turf. It was hot. <laughs> right. Um, but I, I think their passing game tonight is about as good as I've seen this season. So. Let's see if we can. Maddie can take advantage of this one here and drop this one in. Yeah, not sure if she was looking shot. She's upset with herself by it. So I'm guessing that was supposed to be a pass and. It didn't go where she thought it would. It well. I was looking to see where Lizzie Edmonds was. Kaylee Markley going to strip the ball there. And come away with the throw in. Just going to be played just a little too long. Easy snag there for Poisel. Rochester can get that ball out wide and out of that box, so Poisel would either have to make a choice or would not mm -hmm. be able to come after that ball. If you play it there in the middle uh, in the 18, the goalie's just going to come up and snag that. And right. The Lady Dragons will be in action, uh, let's see, on Thursday evening at LaVille. Just a varsity match beginning at 6.30. Tickets need to be purchased through LaVille's athletic website. And unfortunately, I did see there is a uh, processing fee that goes It's like $5 to that and, and then $1.49 yeah, so processing fee. COVID I did see age that. of ticket buying, right? So. Yes. Oh, nice job there by Kaylee Markley. Um, I won't be able to go to that match, so I... Didn't really. I mean, I looked at that and kind of. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate that that's how it's got to be done. But you know, they're trying. They're limiting the number of people in. And we here we don't hand out programs this year. We've got a QR code you scan and it comes up on your phone. So that's why it takes us a little bit sometimes to get a name of someone if we've got to see it on our phone. And I don't know about you, but my eyes are kind of old. <laughs> <laughs> I try. Let's see here. Looks like. Rochester will be in action again on Wednesday night at Oregon Davis. Oh, no, I'm sorry. At home. Oh, and it'll be senior night. Senior night for Rochester. Yeah. Huh? Good. 5.30 Wednesday evening. It says home, non-conference, and it's senior night. And I think, obviously, a, a very winnable game for the... Yeah. I have to be totally honest with you. I didn't know Oregon Davis... How how long have they had a team? A couple years. Well, I don't and I think they maybe should Samantha played them and they didn't. I just they don't did remember. at one point. Um, and I believe they should be back on the Argus schedule. Oh, for you know what? Purposes. Maybe their JV plays them. I'm not. Sh oh, for con yes, this year would be a conference game. It's like Stoltz. Bella Stoltz coming back in for the Dragons. Number 21, Madison and Madison Barkas. And number four, Ariana Pets. And Ariana Pets. Yeah, with Argus now in the uh, you are right. Hoosier Plains, I believe, conference. Is that right? Or am I getting the junior high conference mixed up with it? Hoosier Plains. Hoosier Plains. Nope, Val says yes. Still in the yes. And, and, and Northern and Indiana Soccer Conference, yeah. The only difference is that um, Home Academy is in the NIS teams and not in Hoosier Plains. 
And well, Oregon Davis did not join us in that one. Is that that's right? That's right. They did, they, and they backed they, out. They that's correct. Out, yes, yeah. you're right. You're right. So that's Oregon Davis. Yeah, Oregon Davis is not in that conference. That's correct. Did you say Mackenzie Leslie? Yes. Okay, into the game for the Zebras, yes. Mackenzie Leslie. Dragons will also travel to Lakeland Christian Academy on Saturday, 5 p.m. start. Can't tell from here if it's JV and varsity. Doesn't really. I guess that's varsity at 5 p.m., so not sure what. And, of course, all schedules are subject to change. Of course, <laughs> always. Any day. Especially this year. It's 2020. There might be some murder hornets or some. We've had bees this week. Luckily, weather has not been. It's gorgeous out here. Oh, nice try there by Bella Stoltz. Actually, the. Ended up being a cold kick. Yeah. To say, actually, I think the ball actually got out of bounds before she touched it. Definitely a, a more even half here so far that neither team really able to attack, put an attack together. A little over 10 minutes into this first or second half. We say, Amy, don't mind us, right? We were both up at 3.30 3 30 this morning. <laughs> you had to go to work. I, I just I woke up and, and couldn't go back to sleep. I think I knew it was going to be a long day. And good to have a good soccer game here at Arcs because if we've had some lopsided games uh, mm -hmm. both for Argus and in the Invitational um, and it's this has been much better soccer yeah. to watch nice clean game really yeah I say the less you have to hear from the referee the, the better uh -huh. the game That was a good hustle there by that was. by Nelson here. Well defended, though, on the recovery there. Lauren does a great job of getting her foot on that ball. Um, it's going to be unfortunate there. Just an unlucky bounce. Mm -hmm. No, we talked about having your arms up. Girls are right, notorious yes. for putting arms up and ball. Yeah, if that arm comes off the body, they're going to get you. Makes that little bounce and... Looks like maybe Maddie Vanderwill waiting. Uh, yes, it is. I can tell by the way she's dancing over she's there. She's dancing on the uh, sideline. <laughs> yes, going in. She's I can say it. she's my niece. I'm, I'm not knocking well, her. She <laughs> knows it too. She's well aware that she's dancing on the yeah. sideline. So. Just gonna give Sydney Shepard a break. Rochester parents still trying to get their team fired up, which is good. Nice positive energy for hey, them. Hey, there's 26 minutes left in this game. Absolutely. 26 minutes is a long time. Rochester has uh, Cameron Burkett ready to come into the game when she gets an opportunity. Are you coming to hang out tomorrow night? Uh, I probably will. I haven't been. It is a boys game, so I should be here. What a turn. Oh. And again, just getting in front of the ball for Rochester. Yeah. And you know what? The the Rochester girls, <laughs> many, they've had a face ball, I think. Yes. Uh, I mean, they've, they've put themselves they're out putting there. putting themselves there. in front of the ball. Yeah. Good turn there by Barkus battling. Rochester defense is tough. They're going to make him work for it. <laughs> and Madison. Madison was done. A good shot on goal there by 
Dunlap, I believe, right? Good idea. You never know. I mean, that could... I could go right over her head. Ooh. Looks like Carly Miller coming in for the Dragons, giving Emma Dunlap a break. Looks like Cameron Burkett and Haley Pisick coming into the game for the Zebras. Good win for the throw in there. I'm really impressed with the Dragons passing tonight. Yes, that was just need to be a little quicker there on the corner if we get that ball back in. That was a great ball out there by Barkus. Yeah, like I said, the one game it was, I kept saying to myself, play defeat, play defeat, play defeat. You're losing the ball. They were kind of doing, you know, that just kicking it. I wasn't sure where they were kicking it to, but they really maintained their possession tonight by playing defeat. What a great touch there. Another shot just right at the goalie, though. Goalie magnet. It's Ariana Allen. I almost called her Leslie. That's her mom. <laughs> Leslie Allen. You know, they, I don't remember who had taught me this, but they – I don't know if it's true, but they said, they asked, why do goalkeepers wear bright pastel neon colored uniforms? And that's so that the shooter sees them and kicks the ball right <laughs> at them. So I know I was guilty of that I funny see. when I played. They are fun. It's like Lizzie Edmonds coming back in for the Dragons and Hannah Trump giving Hines and Allen a break. And it looks like Abigail Richard coming in for the Zebras. Got a shout out to uh, Mark Gordon, who's watching from his recliner. He says it's fun watching travel teammates and goalkeepers play each other and seeing his daughter coach. Yeah. And he says, hi, Val, and hi, Brandon. Of course, Mark Gordon, a big part of Argus soccer for yeah. a long time. And dad of Rochester's coach, yeah. Exactly, yes. He's been a part of our travel club here. He helped start the travel club here, I believe. And I think he even maybe he spent a season up here in the booth, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Probably. So Good. So hello to Mark. Again, another guy who's just passionate about the game of soccer. He's uh, at one point, I don't know if he's still doing it or not, but he was a, a referee. I don't know if it was a signer, but he was a trainer. Oh. He did classes for, for refereeing. And, and the last I knew, he was the referee assigner for the whole – Northern half of the that state, be, south, yeah. southern, I don't know. So cool. again, he, he knows the game. Yes, which means that basically all your travel, all that, he was the one that made sure that there were refs at that game and got refs. So if you'd like to be a ref, check out the courses. I know around January they usually have one. Yes. They are hurting for refs if you're I mean, a high school age kid. You know what? You can make some pretty decent money being a ref. So. And even here in, in high school level games, if you're looking to for extra money, it, it pays well. Yeah, you got to deal with the – with the yelling and the stuff from the parents and even some of the players and coaches, that sort of thing. But uh, One thing I I learned from my sister-in-law years ago when Kelsey played. My niece graduated in 2009. She would never sit near parents because she they just yelled, and she just didn't want to be that parent that yelled. So she would always stand off to the side. So that's what I always tried to do was stay away. And I'm not out there on the field. I, I don't see what they see. It's, it's a split-second call they've got to make. And, yeah, sometimes it's the wrong call maybe, but – no one's perfect, and you rarely get an official who's being intentionally biased. Biased, yeah, correct. I, I agree. It's not to say that it doesn't happen at times, but uh, as long as they're consistently inconsistent, right? <laughs> Both ways, and I don't, I don't usually have a problem with it. I, I just don't want to see anybody get hurt, right? But again, you can't get any closer to the game than on the field. Yeah. So if you miss playing, then and and roughing is subjective. I mean. If you don't like it, pick up a whistle. Yep, that's exactly it. That's what they tell parents all the time. Yeah. 
we can do better, go to IHSAA.org and yeah. find out how you can become a Or call a Mr. Gordon. Mr. Gordon will start you out in the – I just – that's why I like to assistant coach. I'm not – I don't see things fast enough to be a referee. I officiated for about uh, 10 or 12 years. Did you? Um, from the youngest all the way up to high school level games. So Okay. I was telling Andy, you need to go rough. He it likes to coach too much. Again, it does it does pay well. I mean, it's it, some of these guys. This is, for some people, this is what they do. They just officiate. Then other ones do have day jobs, and then they just referee at night. Oh, she's on sides. Week. Madison Barks. Great ball through. I would like to see her get some. There you go. There's Hannah Trump coming up to give her some help there. And she's gonna go down. Great defense. And well, by the yeah, well recovered by Rochester there. That was a a great ball. I think it might have been all the way back here by Hines, if I'm not mistaken. If she's on the field. That or it was Maddie. Yep. Could have been either one of those yeah. two. Again, thank you to my daughter, Samantha, for helping us out running the camera tonight. Our cameraman was unable to to be here. He is home doing homework, though. <laughs> or he better be. It's well done there by Stultz just to keep forcing that Rochester player out of bounds and, and not giving her any room. Playing defense, sometimes as a defender, that's all you can do. Just run next to him. Again, we always say, what, the sideline's another defender, right? Yeah. The, the offensive player can go no further than that, so you use him as a defender. And, and don't give him space. Got some, quite a few subs here coming in for The Argus. first one's Lily Hines, Emma So clearly Dunlap. Lily was not the one that made that pass earlier, so you must yeah. be with Mandy. Lily, Emma, and I don't know, uh, uh, Nana. I'm going to say Ariana. Well, That's my guess. You were correct. Okay. What do I win? <laughs> you don't even need the binoculars. I don't. Maybe new glasses, but. Someday we'll get that press box built on the other side there. Yeah. We won't have to look so far. We're no, we don't have to look into the sun. Take a lot of pride in our soccer-only complex that we have here. <laughs> we don't have to share. And uh, Yeah, there's no football here. Argus is. Somebody at work asked me today, said, is Argus good at anything else other than soccer? And I said, well, we like I'm sure we, we are, are, but. Of course we are. Sydney Shepard also coming in with the, all those other ladies. Well, hey, we've been playing soccer here since 1963. Yeah, and I, I did. I did say it's fair to say that uh, all of our athletes um, on the boys' side, especially, oh, shot just over the top there. Good left-footed, sweet shot. little shot there by Hannah Trump. Um, and with Bella, Bella Stoltz with the pass in. Macy Nelson coming into the game for uh, Rochester. She also has played travel as well as did her brother. Can't think of his name. You know, what I was going to say before is, that, uh, you know, all especially our male athletes, boy athletes, they, we don't have football, so they all play soccer. So mm -hmm. we don't have to split that like the other small uh, 1A schools do that have football. Well, and um, Coach Coach Powell back in the 60s started soccer. First public school in Indiana is what I've always been told. That's what they say. That's what the record books show. Um, then he wanted to keep his basketball players in right, shape. It was, so he had started. Nothing, it had nothing to do with nothing soccer. Nothing to do with wanting to play soccer. Or, and soccer is one of, oh. Yeah, and here's a good Emma opportunity. Emma Dunlap tapping it back. Rochester. Now, I, I got to tell you something about Emma. When I coached her in U9, U10, she wanted to play defense. She would let the girl get away from her and then chase her down and get just the to, ball back to, from her. Just to have some fun. <laughs> yeah, she was, oh, she was fast. And she often more now plays either midfield or up top, so. We've got a different defensive line back there. We've got Emma... Emma Dunlap and Lily Hines back with uh, Carly Miller and Maddie Vanderwill. 
Be a free kick for Rochester. <coughs> Bigfoot on that. Again, not really sure what the uh, end plan is there. Probably want to get something a little more substantial set up. Take an opportunity there from 45 yards to, to mm -hmm. get a shot on goal. Well, if you're at home watching, you're not going to be able to take advantage of the 50 cent hot dogs and popcorn they've got in the concession stand. Looks like Lauren McLaughlin and, and Sophie Bullenbucker. Sophie Bullenbucker, yes. Okay. And Mercedes Brown for the Lady Zebras. So Sophia getting into the game for the first time here. Again, Argus just holding on to the two nothing lead here, and that's probably mm -hmm. just a good soccer play there. Um, yeah, she got the ball, used her body, didn't use any uh, any arms to get there. Always joke that the the parents want calls made and the players don't they just want to keep yeah. playing they don't want to stop and every minute or two i hate to say it but just because someone falls down doesn't mean that there's a foul if those players uh they want to they want to bump they want to they want to battle we've s we've had good fouls called tonight i think the rest have done a good job of keeping the game under control and it's been a clean game yeah allowing the girls to play the game physically without mm -hmm. uh, without crossing that line you don't want the whistle blowing every <laughs> that takes away from the momentum and What a good battle there by, by Rochester <laughs> there on the far <laughs> side. Um, Steve Stricker would like two hot dogs, please. <laughs> I'm going to tell him $50 for delivery. It's a good ball there. Again, no foul there. Just well played by Rochester. Bodying her off the ball. And, again, Lily Hines has excellent foot skills. And she is in what grade now? She She's is a freshman. freshman, right? Mm -hmm. I thought I remember seeing her last year out on the yeah. junior high field. So, yep. Um, and she was pretty dominant there as well. Mm -hmm. So to come out as a freshman and she's going to be good for you three more years. So you can never work with that ball enough. Nice little pass over by Rochester. Oh, just uh, well, that might drop. And it is just wide. Good idea. Good idea. And I can't see numbers. The player was there too. Tap that in. Caden Boffman coming in for the Dragons. A sophomore. Yeah, that had a real good opportunity there for Rochester. It sure did. It could have taken. Argus kind of fell asleep on. And yeah. Almost dropped in the far post or if somebody had gotten a touch on it. You think if you're Argus, you're going to want to, you're going to want to score here in the next minute or two kind of. You have a little more Ooh. cushion because we keep giving Rochester time here. I thought that hit her hand. I'm not sure why she was ended up on a tee. A little faster. That's a great ball there by Edmonds. Great hustle by the defender there. And turned it. And see, so yeah, that's well done. Well done. Played it with the right foot. Got it down the field. Definitely don't want to give a team a corner kick. Again, Argus just a little slow with the ball. Just make a little quicker decision. Move that ball a little faster. And I think you're right. They need to use their open spaces just a little bit more. They need to see that field where they can go. I believe that's is that Carly Ellis over there. That could be. Yeah, fifteen what? Carly yes. Ellis coming in. A little cut back there by Allen. Uh, Ariana's brother plays on the boys' team. He had some great little foot. 
He had a great goal the other night. Foot skills. Uh, yeah, he scored the, the first, first goal. goal. Yeah. Within the first. It was quick, four, maybe four or five minutes yeah. in. Yeah. He also has worked very hard. and for Again, for a guy who's not very big. No. You know. And, and a year, he truly is a year younger than his class. He's a senior, but, I mean, he just turned 17 in September. Right. Just goes to show you what footwork and, and speed will do. And I'll tell you where I saw him every Sunday with his family. Nana and Gabby, the older sister, you know, they were out in the soccer field at the park. Need the Lady Dragons here to just hold the ball. We got it. The Rochester girl's up and going, so okay. we're going to play on. Walking off, she took that ball right to the gut and kept going, which oh is goodness. impressive. I'd like to see him go back to, there you go, passing game in possession. Yeah, yeah, we're just going to look for this through ball again. If we just move the ball side to side a little bit here. Nice idea by Lauren McLaughlin. Uh, you've got help with Lily Hines right there. Another extra pass here to keep this thing moving. Yeah, I'm not really mm -hmm. sure what Sydney was thinking there. She's looking maybe just to take an opportunity. Maybe she far post. She looks a little 90. disappointed, so she wasn't yeah. happy with what she, she wants did. She wants a goal. There, so. I, I, th I think she, yep. yeah. Sometimes it's okay to be aggressive. Yeah. Oh, I believe Kaylee's nickname is George, the goalie. <laughs> Kaylee Woods' nickname is George. Yes, I was. Nobody knows her mom. What? I remember her mom telling. Yeah. I just heard a fan yell. Is that yell what they're yelling, George? Yes, I thought I heard that a I'd times. forgotten that. I'd forgotten that. Well, as long as she's okay with being called oh, George. Oh, no, then she's been, yeah. Ever since she's come down to play travel, I'd, I'd forgotten that they call her George. Cameron Burkett. And Ryla Heishman coming back in for the Lady Zebras. And number 10, Lily Eaton. And Lily Eaton. And the game for number 15. Carly and Ellis. Carly Ellis seeing the field for the Dragons. About seven to go here. Still 2-0. Zero, 0-0 zero this half. Yes, it's been uh, it's been pretty much played in the middle of the field. Argus has not been able to, to get those shots that they had in the first half. They've only got them down for uh, three here in the second half, although Rochester has not cool. gotten a shot on goal yet this half either. Maddie Vanderbilt taking it up and... She was faking it. She was faking it. That's yeah. All part of the plan there. Getting that ball right down the line, and Maddie just has to play it out of bounds and no other play. Good step this there by much Maddie. This better keeping it in. That's a great ball there. Well defended. Again, using the body, no arms, just using that shoulder. I'd, Caden is a sophomore. I'd like to see Caden... There are times you need to clear it. There's also times I'd like to see her look for that pass. Should we let Steve know that we have free hot dogs oh. being brought up here into the booth? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I said I didn't want I might have to eat a hot dog. Well, I, I mean, they're right there, so. I know, and I don't normally eat a hot dog. Is anybody watching the game mustard. right now? I'm taking mustard for the girls just to give Thank them you. a little more mustard. <laughs> I will send him a picture of our hot dogs. <laughs> I told him it was $50. We'd deliver him one. Ooh, not me. Could be a corner here, and it will be. It will be an Argus corner. A little over five minutes remain, five and a half minutes. And we've got Lizzie Edmonds. That's, uh, Heckman coming that is Micah Heckman, little number two, I believe. Yep, number two. I like Micah. She is feisty. As a player, she, to me, plays like a boy plays because she she doesn't give up if she loses the ball. No. 
So she continues to chase that ball down because she wants the ball. And sometimes you don't see that out of girl, female players. <laughs> she is the, what, the Tobin Heath type player probably? Ah, uh, Tobin US Heath is one of my favorite players. Just, uh, maybe maybe not. I'm not knocking Mike, but not, maybe not yeah. with Tobin Heath's foot skills because Tobin right. Heath has some amazing foot skills. But, but that, that drive to, if you have the ball, I'm taking it back. Yeah. Um, Val, I'm supposed to send this hot dog to Steve with you for tomorrow. <laughs> I think I'll send the aluminum foil and not. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. I don't know if it'll last that long. Rochester has a sub ready to come in, but she's standing right by the flag, which is why oh. <laughs> we need that other press box built so we can see it from the back. Again, this game still four minutes to go. Um, Rochester can find a way to sneak one in. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, they're the not giving up. They here, are. So. Their intensity is just as high as it was at the beginning of the game. Again, I have to believe that comes from the coaches over there. That's mm -hmm. you know yeah. that, that never give up attitude and. How many corners are we on on this? Uh, this will be number six for the game, the okay. second for the half here for the Lady Dragons. And again, I don't think that the Lady Dragons have had a shot that's come off of them yet. And there have been some solid corner kicks here. So, I it's again, Edmonds on the ball it's here. It's a we'll tough drop thing. We don't there. see very many. That one out just out a little further than, than she would like. Yeah. Give it back to her. Looks like Willie Hines has given her a drop, a but she's going to push it up over to. Heckman, who is also left-footed. Nice little ball there in. That's a smart choice there by Shepard to lay that ball back out. Shouldn't have an angle. Oh. And just wide. Again, Lily's keeping it low to the ground. And that would have been a hard ball to stop. Into the game for Rochester, number five, Dallas Holloway. Dallas Holloway into the game for Rochester. That is a solid name. Yeah. Good Emma ball there. Dunlap. Lay that ball back across. Oh. She wasn't really at an angle to shoot it. Two minutes remaining. Two minutes. Two minutes left. Less than two minutes left in this half. Carly Rex waiting to come into the game for the Dragons. It was dancing over there, not like Maddie, but in anticipation <laughs> and excitement of trying to get into this ball game. If we can get uh, a, if Argus can get a throw in here or goal kick I can kind of see her. I, I coached her the last couple of years. She's she's wants to get into this ball game. It looks like she should right here. Less than a minute left. Ooh, little miss hit off Maddie's feet. Yeah, Dragons. and just a little too much on that pass. Oh. Kicked out. It's gonna be a. Rochester allowed only one goal in their first three games combined. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Val doesn't think Rochester's ever scored against Argus. I'm not. Sometimes I didn't get to go to the Rochester game. I had other games I had to go to. Okay. And... 
that will do it. The t clock runs out. The Dragons come up with a 2-0 victory. And that will make the Dragons 5-4 and four on the season and the Zebras 3-1. and one. Well, thank you so much, Brandon, for... It was a lot of fun. I triple, it. quadruple, yeah. dutying your jobs tonight and chatting kept, with me. Kept me awake. Not that we don't like hearing from Phil, but I'm okay. I, Phil says he's okay with, with <laughs> me grabbing whoever wants to talk with me. Although... All right, that will do it for tonight. From Phil Dean and Amy Stone and Brandon Schaefer and Samantha out on the camera, have a good evening. <laughs>